That's what I like about this program. While you're raising money to build more water holes, there's people that know what you're doing. And to their mind, it's almost like it's already there. It's like if someone get hit by a car out there, and 40 minutes later, I walk out and get hit by a car, and y'all run, call the emergency vehicles, and, and I hear them sirens coming. I feel good. I don't know they're coming for the first guy. <laughs> See how the mind works? As long as nobody told me it wasn't for me, I felt better. And that might have saved my life. And so what you do here tonight is incredible. And those of you that don't understand that, too long to try. Two days ago without water. But there's something about hunger and water and thirst that when you feel good and you're happy because you know hope is there, you don't get thirsty. <laughs> and so again, I say to you, don't worry about the New York Times. Don't worry about television. There's a universal order that sees this. I do 240 days a year. It's just another day. But when my wife said, let me read this to you, let me tell you what this is about. In tears. What a wonderful, and you know, things like this is happening all over the world. You think, how I many people you think know what you are doing here? Kansas City or New York. That don't mean it's not happening. And that's where the hope comes from, is knowing that there's somebody out there. And somebody out there is doing it because you're doing a whole lot of stuff going to the ether. It's changed every day. I never thought I'd see the day. I thoroughly believe that all black folks look alike to white folks until Obama become president. And I had nobody walk up to me and say, excuse me, Mr. President. <laughs> How many of y'all know I ran for president in 1968? Had I won, I'd have asked for a recount. <laughs> if for 200 years, all these billionaire, wealthy, white, educated men in the cabinet that messed up the country like it is now, let me try something different. I've got a cousin from Dr. Third Grade. He'd be my Secretary of Defense. And I can just see him on 60 Minutes now. Uh, Mr. Gregory, uh, Jabo, now that you're Secretary, what do you plan on doing about defense? At first, I'm going to fix it, then paint it. <laughs> and I didn't know that a Negro had never worked a white nightclub because it wasn't permitted until Hugh Hefner came down to the Negro nightclub and saw this Dick Gregory and a month later brought me into the playboy because that's the first time in the history of America a Negro comic stood flat-footed and talked to white folks. The playboy club, it was the hottest thing in the world at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Women walking around looking like bunnies. <laughs> A supper club. Let me tell you something. I know a lot of you know it, but those of you don't know, if you hit the lottery and you get ready to go to dinner, don't go to no damn club. Go to a restaurant. <laughs> oh, they come in from all over the world when they play hard to you. Time magazine just happened to come in to see another act. And somebody said, you better go catch Dick Gregory. He was a science editor. Hmm? Not an entertainment editor. And he walked up there to see me. He didn't come to review me. He was just trying to get in. And he had to come in as a writer. They tried to prove this. 
bring it, comic up. So he come in and went back and wrote an entertainment review. I'm just taking a shortcut through the University of Chicago. Now this black woman is supposed to be so smart, see me take a shortcut through the University of Chicago and thought I was a professor. How smart was she? <laughs> <laughs> we talked for a few minutes, the next thing I know we were going out to lunch and dinner. Next thing I know, my first daughter came to me. And they've been to the best schools, best everything, right? She's like six years old. Dot. I don't trust nobody in the ghetto to say Dot. <laughs> I feel more comfortable with my Hey, you! She said, I uh, asked Mother, could I interview you? And she told me, you'd be home next week and you're just going to be here a couple of days, so I want to interview you today. I have to write a project, a paper, and I had two different things I had to write on. The family, or the astronauts, so I picked the family. So the first question I'd like to, like to ask you, how did you propose to mother? Well, it's one good thing about having smart children because you don't have to just break everything down. I said, well, Michelle, uh, we were married on February the 2nd, and you was born on March the 28th. <laughs> she said, oh, I think I'll do it on the astronauts. <laughs> <laughs> so the problem I had with my wife when we first got married, I was making $30 a week, working three nights a week, $10 a night. $59 a year with a wife and a family. But if you're not scared, if you're not worried, if you're not hanging all kind of negativity on you, how you're gonna survive? These cops gonna to try to deal with them like they dealt with niggas. And the system gonna come in. Oh, we did it, we did it. Threaten white folks. We shall overcome. Let me sing to We shall overcome. Someday, see, someday don't threaten nobody. But you niggas were saying today. <laughs> huh? See the difference in white privilege? When we was going to Washington before King was assassinated, we was going and calling what? The poor? People smart. That don't threaten nobody. Because up until the last two years, most of y'all sitting in here didn't know you was poor. You know it now. Hmm? So that didn't threaten nobody. These young white kids went into Washington a month ago and said, Take back DC. Y'all better listen to what they say. Huh? They're not coming and asking for no crumbs or coming and scratching their butt or laughing. They come up with 300 years of white privilege. In New York City, they say, Occupy! What? Wall Street! All my life, when I heard the word Occupy, is one mighty nation taking over, occupying a poor nation. See the difference? Gaddafi, you think you're free, you think you got free press. How many of y'all in this room know Gaddafi been a CIA agent ever since he's 15 years old? Anybody know that? Hmm? Huh? How many of y'all know when we got him to take the rap for Pan Am 103 and Mark of How many of y'all in this room know there was eight DEA agents all that back here by the federal court? to testify about how they was running drugs in America. That plane would have made it back. This system would have shook. It didn't make it back. 
Then we got our little punk thug to take the rap for us. You plant the seeds of love and kindness and something good will grow in your body. It could be cancer in there. Should it not be just some high blood pressure to wipe it out the way? I remember I bought a 400 acre farm, the largest farm in Massachusetts. And I back there, I live around rich white folks. They go across the pond, Steinway, Piano Air, up the hill, Ocean Spray. I got there, they had 15 horses. So I called the Humane Society, I said, I've got 15 horses out here, would you wear it? They said, Tom, oh, those are short, they ain't no damn short horses, get these horses off the farm. My children was up, I went to my, my, these children love us. These children will let plants die in the bedroom. I know they ain't coming out here feeding no damn horses, get these horses off. <laughs> So, when you understand the universe and love, I've been married 53 years of love, I got nothing to do with it. It's not, I love you, baby. If I can't have you, nobody gonna have you. Something sound wrong with that, do See, you've been married 53 years, how I do it? It's about being lovable. Lovable. When I'm lovable, you're lovable, I'm safe with you. I'm a strong vegetarian. I strong believe in, in the whole nutrition thing, but if I'm out there and get hit by a car right now and my skull get fractured, do not take me to the local nutritionist. Take me to the hospital. <laughs> when they won't give me a shot, examine me, and give me one of them old x-rays with that radiation, and they're going to operate on me and give me some of that good stuff. <laughs> and while I'm laying there in the hospital, I'm on none of you just come by there with some wild yam dust. <laughs> I go to vegetarian conventions all over the world. It's, it's amazing how many vegetarians was not aware that Hitler was a vegetarian. How many of y'all do that? Didn't smoke, didn't drink, didn't cuss. Went to bed every night, 90 minutes after the sun went down. And look how that boy turned out. <laughs> <laughs> so I tell my vegetarian friends who think they some of them that they cured it, y'all. How did y'all be fat? I said, well, I don't, I don't know. I did it easy, but I can tell you one thing. One of my goodest friends on the planet was the most loving, kind, human being, spiritual I've ever met. Called Dr. Martin Luther King, and he'd eat a booty out of a pig. <laughs> <laughs> so y'all got to do more than just give up eating animals.
three dozen was great roses. I didn't know there was any great roses. Gave a $30,000 excursion trip for her and her sister. Mother's Day. Father's Day, what they give me? They gave me a carton of cigarettes, <laughs> box of cigars, case of rum, and a double barrel shotgun. <laughs> I said, do you ever give your mother anything that might kill her? <laughs> I say, it's nice that you, you, you sit in your mother halfway around the world, first class, with her sisters, but y'all do know I'm married to her. Oh, you got smart too. She said, yes, Dad, uh, we know that, but you know, mother can't swim and you can't swim, so she's out there in the ocean, if something happened, who you think we're going to get? I said, thank you. I've been celebrating my birthday for the last two weeks. My special birthday, I turned 80 this year. And it's strange being 80 because I was born October the 12th, 1932. So I'm doing a radio show the other day, and the guy said, Well, that's just 79. I said, Well, I counted nine months I was in my mother's belly. <laughs> He said, well, you're three months short, and I count the three months that my father was begging. <laughs> and then I started looking at the stats. I mean, I wasn't looking at birthday stats. I was just looking at the, the new census. This latest census said that 80-year-old men, when you reach 80 in America, there's six women, women, women to each man. Yeah. Why do I have to wait this long to get them to my house? <laughs> I ran from Los Angeles, California to New York City, 50 miles a day for 71 days to dramatize world and domestic hunger. In a newspaper, and I took nothing but liquid, in a newspaper reporter interviewing me in New Mexico. Said, Mr. Gregory, do you think you running from L.A. to New York will make a difference. I said, well, I know when I was a little baby boy, laying in bed, didn't have enough to eat, went to bed hungry, woke up hungry. TV wasn't invented. If I turned on the radio and heard somebody say, Bob Hope is running across the country for world and domestic hunger, I could sleep a little bit better that night. It's almost when someone begged you for something, and you reach out and put it in, your credit starts in the universe, not when they do something with it. 